Hello and welcome to the fifth video lecture on Albert Einstein's paper called On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies. In this video, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead and examine a rather complicated equation. And I'm just going to write that equation out. I'm going to pause the video, write it out, and then I will talk about it. All right, so here is the equation, and it is definitely not the simplest equation that Einstein has ever written in his papers, but that is okay. It is possible to understand it still. The next line in the paper uh, says, if x prime is chosen infinitesimally small. So the next thing we're going to do is choose x prime to be very, very small and try to get to the next line in the paper. So if you're following along, you will be able to understand what I'm talking about. Um, and at the end of this video, hopefully I will have derived the next line in the paper, which involves partial derivatives. So I'm just going to try to make sense of this rather confusing part of Einstein's paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by two because um, I really don't like that one half. And if we're going to be looking at derivatives, um, having a one half there is less desirable than having a two times something. So I would rather have a two than a one half. So I'm going to multiply everything by, by two. So this is what we get after multiplying by two. Now let's examine this equation and see what we notice. Um, I'm gonna highlight some things that are similar. So in yellow, I'm going to highlight the zeros over here. Those are similar. And in orange, I'm going to highlight some time parameters. Uh, we have t plus x prime over c minus v over here, as well as over here. So those two are, are similar. Just breaking down this equation a bit. Uh, what else? We have a t over here which is similar to this t and this t. Of course, the y and z coordinates are the same in all the terms. Now what's different? I guess in red, I can highlight what's different. This definitely stands out as something different, not appearing in any other function. Um, with another color, maybe green, this x prime is also very different as compared to the other terms. All right, so I have unhighlighted the y and z values, which are zero across the board because nothing is happening in those areas. Um, and I also indicated what appears once in this equation and also what appears twice. The only thing that I have not taken into consideration now is the yellow highlighted elements and the purple highlighted elements. 
Now, I think I'm going to say that T only appears one time because even though T is involved in the orange part, it is not equal to T. So it's a little misleading to have this duality here. I'm going to remove that and put T as appearing once. And I also have zero as appearing twice where zero should be understood, this highlighted zero should be understood in the context of these two zeros that are highlighted over here. And I'm just going to make them look a little more similar, but circular highlight. All right, so now that we have examined the arguments and how often they appear, we can start to understand how these are related. We want to compare time arguments to time arguments and spatial arguments to spatial arguments. And something I just realized is that I should probably just make that parameter that's highlighted or that expression that's highlighted in red and orange, just something that's highlighted in red, just to be consistent with how all of this is being done. So I'm going to say that there's something that appears once. And this now causes the orange argument to appear once. So the only thing that appears twice is that zero in the X um, position or each X position. Or actually I probably shouldn't say X because we're talking about something that can be equal to X prime. Um, so probably psi is a better word. Here, psi is the Greek letter psi. And remember, x prime is a particular point or a particular, or x prime refers to a particular position with respect to a moving frame. So that's why we need to use psi instead of x. x is for the stationary frame. To think about this more, it doesn't really matter that zero appears twice. Um, so I'm going to remove this appears once situation and just look at all of the unique arguments and see how they are related and only compare space to space and time to time. So let's, let's sort the space and time arguments. So the first one is a time argument. I'm going to put the time arguments over on the right. Usually time appears on the right anyways. And position on the left. So we have ooh, we have a lot more time arguments than position arguments. Uh, zero refers to a position argument. Oh, just kidding. We don't have that many more. Um, so the position is going to be easier than the time just because there are only two of them. So how does x prime relate to zero? Um, well, x prime minus zero is x prime. Einstein wants us to choose x prime infinitesimally small. So when we do that, x prime goes to dx prime, assuming, of course, that x prime is actually the name of the coordinate and not a particular point. So 
there's that. In any case, x prime is a variable and there can be change with respect to a variable, even if that variable refers to a point. So mm, we'll keep using x prime. Mm. All right, so in order to get from zero to x prime, we would need to add x prime. In order to get from zero to dx prime, you could potentially say you need to add dx prime. That's a little bit hand wavy, but it is a very, very small change in distance. This is again, very hand wavy. Now taking a step back, let's look at the time arguments here and let's order them from least to greatest if they're not already in that order. We have t, we have t plus something, and then we have t plus something else. So if I were to order them, I would put t, t plus something, and then t plus something plus something. I'm assuming that these um, changes in time are all positive. Um, is a, maybe not a necessary assumption because maybe x prime could be negative, but I guess what I'm trying to say is if x prime happens to be positive, I'm assuming that the denominators are the denominators here. I'm assuming that these these are all positive so that I can order the time values in a logical way. Um, yeah, this C plus B is definitely going to give you something, I'm just gonna assume that X prime is greater than zero. Um, if that's the case, then this is a positive value, assuming V is greater than zero as well. So um, this would come after this time value. And you can also, we're still assuming X prime is greater than zero. Um, let's assume that V is less than C, V is less than C, so that this is a positive value, so that this comes after this time value. Um, and then we can order the position parameters in a similar way. Oops. Um, just a lot simpler, assuming x prime is greater than zero. And now we can start to think about what happens to the time arguments when the x prime variable is going to, to dx prime. So I could just go ahead and replace x prime with dx prime very tempted to do that. I think I'm just going to go ahead and write that. Um, right next to this. So t plus dx prime, c minus v. And we also have t plus x prime, c minus v plus, oh, forgot the d, sorry. dx prime over c plus v. That's a little sloppy, sorry about that. Okay. And for completeness, for completeness, you can also write dx prime over here and this still remains zero and this still remains t. That looks like plus sign. So I'm gonna change it to t. All right, good enough for now. 
let's look at what we have. I just erased the x prime to dx prime because that notation is confusing. I think it's self-explanatory what I'm doing when I write these new expressions in this brownish color. All right, so now that we have analyzed the arguments somewhat, we can start to rearrange this equation. Um, I think it would be useful to separate everything um, into pairs so we can compare terms that have uh, two terms, um, one of them having zero and one of them having dx. And we can compare two terms with these arguments and then we can compare two terms with these arguments so that we'll have um, three different differences, three unique differences to compare. Um, fortunately, there is that factor of two here, so that will allow us to compare, to use this orange term twice, once for the comparison here, and once for this comparison. Um, and our final comparison will be between um, one of the yellow terms, not sure which one yet, and the other one of these, um, one of one of these terms. Um, so yeah, I just realized that we've if we're going to be comparing this argument to this argument, this argument to this argument, that already takes up the two terms here that we have. So if we want to have some sort of change in x going on, um, and we have our green x parameter here, we're gonna need one of these terms for this comparison, and then one of these terms for one of the time comparisons. So it looks like we won't be able to do two time comparisons over here. So we we'll, might just need to choose one. Um, so either this one or this one. So that could be a tough choice. Um, anyways, the constraining factor is definitely this one. So let's start with the comparisons with the terms involving a change in distance. We have our x prime and our zeros. Um, but then again, we have this conundrum where we don't know whether to compare this x prime with this term or with this term. So maybe we need to look at the time argument as well to determine that. If we compare this term with this one, we'll be comparing this situation, or if we choose to compare this term with this term, we'll be comparing this situation. Um, what happens if we do both? What if we somehow um, do a difference? What if we put one, what if we take one of these terms and compare one of these to this, and then one of these to, to this term. Um, would, that, would that make sense? I mean, we only have three terms and we need to take that two out. Um, so we should, in order to, to analyze some kind of difference, like, in, like when you do that for derivatives. So we're 
definitely not going to compare it to itself. So we're going to move this over here and the other one we're going to move over here. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's what we, we need to do. And that's long story short, um, could have maybe reached that conclusion a little bit sooner, but I think it's useful to see the, the thought process. Um, maybe with time, I will get faster. I'm just gonna shrink this down. I don't think I'm gonna really be using it. Um, now I'm just gonna write out those differences that I just mentioned. Okay, this is the current situation. I'm going to see what can be done now. Something I am observing is that this difference has a change in position as well as a change in time. And this difference similarly has a change in position, um, the same change in position that we have here, as well as a change in time. But this change in time is different from this change in time. So it looks like we're going to have four different changes, and then two of those changes are going to end up being the same just because of the way the position arguments are laid out here. Um, so let's try to quantify those changes a little bit more and also take into account that we have x as uh, x prime as dx prime. So I'm going to use those dark brown arguments now. I'm going to uh, um, update the equation. So this is what I get in this dark brown color with these infinitesimal quantities. Now the next step is to try to express these in terms of um, quantities that are used in calculus, because that's the direction that Einstein heads in his paper. Uh, let's do something where we, well, okay, so we want to make sure that the, just to get things straight in our heads, let's make sure that the first term, meaning the term on the left, is of a later or a higher value than the term on the right for each difference that we're looking at. So we're doing something like a final minus initial. So we're doing like a final minus initial situation. Um, so this term should, um, at least focusing on the time, let's do the time first and then the position second. So um, with all the assumptions we made in terms of the the signs of all of the quantities appearing here, um, this would be after this. So I almost want to put a negative sign out here and switch the order of those. I think I'm going to do that. And when we're focusing on the time arguments, this definitely comes after that. So this, at least for the time situation, is in the correct order, but then once we consider the position situation, um, we'll switch the order there. We'll need a, a negative sign. So that's our current situation. Okay, so I just rewrote the previous line and just put a negative sign here and switch the order of these two terms. Nothing super dramatic. Okay, so now I'm going to do some math that is a little bit hand wavy, but really is the only way that I can see this working out in terms of getting the next equation in minus nine's paper. So bear with me while I do some hand wavy math. 
that kind of makes sense. So I'm going to keep that negative sign, of course, but now I'm just going to express this difference in terms of the, in terms of um, differentials. Some people may even call them exact differentials. I'm not even sure about what the exact, uh, what the precise terminology is here, uh, but um, um, here we go. So let's look at the change in time of that first, the, the change in time, focus on the change in time for this first difference. Um, we're going to end up with a change in the function tau. Um, I'm using green. Okay, so we're going to end up with um, d tau. Um, and yeah, there, that's pretty much all I can say. Um, maybe this will make more sense if I divide everything by by um, dx. Um, so let's just divide the entire, let's just divide the entire equation by dx prime. Does that even make sense? Um, do we need to do a, uh, do we need to differentiate the entire equation by d, dx prime? Maybe. Um, we could, could try that, um, let me think. I'm just going to go with my original idea. I don't think I need to divide the equation by anything or multiply by anything or apply any differential operators at this point. I think what we can do is start to consider these derivatives. Um, remember, I'm thinking about the time first. Um, our independent variable for time is lowercase t. And then we want to multiply by that change in time to sort of cancel out this dt in the denominator and get the resulting d tau with respect or due to that change in time. So that's sort of the hand waving. Um, and the change, the change in time is from t to t plus this quantity here. So the, the change is equal to this. Now we need to know what sign to put. Um, one second. I'm thinking since this is already a difference, the the this I think we can just put dx prime times c minus v as that change in time. I don't, I'm really not sure at this point whether it should be positive or negative change. Um, if it were positive, if we keep it like this, we're basically saying that the change is positive. But if we put a negative sign here, we would be saying that the change is negative. But here in this expression, we're just considering the difference. So then we're left with the change. So I think I think this is correct as as written. If we had if we had distributed the negative sign, then we would have been going from t, this would have been positive, and then this would have been negative. And it would have been the difference of this variable and this variable. Um, 
And the quote unquote final time would have been before the initial time or the, the time on the left would have been before the time on the right. So then to get to the, to get from T to T plus this quantity, we would need to still add that amount to T. But by considering the, the difference of this minus that, maybe we're implicitly assuming that T is greater than this value. No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, this backwards thinking isn't really helping. So I guess for the time being, I'm going to have to just use these positive interpretations because I really can't think with the negative interpretation. Unfortunately, that's confusing me uh, a lot. So yeah, OK, continuing on. Um, This is final, this is initial, we keep the negative sign. Um, we should leave some space for the change in position that we're going to have to deal with. Um, final minus initial, uh, uh, that's pretty straightforward in when we're using the same conventions, because we're assuming x prime is greater than zero. So um, in a way, I guess that sort of implies that dx prime is greater than zero um, when you move from the finite to the infinitesimal region realm. So anyways, we have a derivative. I should be using partial derivatives here. Plus d, d. T, D, M. Okay, so we're treating X prime as a natural coordinate. And then we have a change in um, X prime of uh, DX prime. Okay, so that takes care of the first term. Um, and the second one is added. So let's see if we can do the time and space changes. Again, this is very hand wavy. But what um, we, we need to consider the time, time changes from the first term to the second term. Um, also missing a parenthesis. <laughs> so add that. Okay. So in order to get from the final, from the initial to the final, <laughs> in order to get from the initial to the final, we need to add this dt. Okay, that makes sense. So the dt, the, the change in time in this case is going to be dx over c plus v because that's the different part. And then as far as the change in space, this is a little bit backwards. So, um, but um, we're treating this as the initial and this as the final. So we're going from this positive part to this zero. 
So we're going backwards in space when we're keeping time as the constraining factor for the ordering here. So um, we have a derivative as before, and then our change in x is going to be a negative dx, just the opposite of what's happening in the previous case when we're going from zero initial, I say initial just because of the way I think about changes, like initial to final, and then initial and final, those, those terms are related to time. So it makes sense that I'm ordering these with respect to time instead of position. In this case, it didn't really matter because um, of the directions of the, because the directions of the positions and the time were both in the same uh, direction, meaning going from a lower value to a higher value. But I mean, things became a little bit clearer once I did this second time. Um, and, um, yeah, so luckily this is making sense. Okay, I'm um, noticing something here where we're getting a cancellation. Not exactly sure if that's supposed to be happening. Um, oh no, we're not getting a cancellation because of that negative sign. So actually we're doing okay. Um, and then these terms may end up combining potentially. Um, interesting. Okay, let's divide the entire equation by dx prime now. Um, this is going to be kind of satisfying um, because now, now these dx primes are going to go to one. <laughs> so one, one, and then negative one. You might as well distribute the negative sign. Um, hopefully I did that distribution correctly and then I'll just turn that plus into a negative sign. Um, what now? We have two of the same terms. So I'm going to erase the duplicates and um, rearrange this equation so that there are no negative signs. We will keep the Time on the left hand side. I should probably use a different color. One over C plus V. Then move everything that has a negative sign to the right. Okay, and then we can maybe combine the terms that have the dt. Um, so actually moving this over to the right was not the best move. Pun intended. So the term with the one over c minus v is gonna remain on the left with the minus sign. Um, and then we can, you know, factor, take away this part, and divide everything by two, the whole equation by two. So, yeah, um, not exactly getting the equation in Einstein's paper, unfortunately, getting some 
weird version of it, namely this sign is off. Um, this is off and I'm missing a one over C minus V D T D T over on the right. I wonder if I could just add that to both sides. Um, that is, would that work? Wow, what if that worked? Okay. <laughs> this is unfiltered. Okay, one half. Wait, let's keep this as a two. Um, I'm getting kind of excited now. And um, I, yeah, I'll do the one half but at the end. Um, okay. So what happens when we add this term in red to both sides? Um, we will get No, I wish I hadn't simplified as much, but I'll rewrite what I have. What, and I'll distribute D tau dt minus one over C minus V, D tau dt plus, this is where I'm adding this new term to both sides, which is something I definitely would not have guessed. That was just me saying, wow, if I, had, if I just added to both sides, it would have fixed the situation. Um, why don't I just do that then? <laughs> if this works, I swear that would have been the luckiest, the luckiest derivation we have done. Um, D tau dt. Okay, so what the question is, what does the left hand side become? I'm almost scared. So I'm like delaying my calculation of the left, but okay, moment of truth. Um, ah, we're getting like a cancellation, I want to say. Um, oh, you know what? It's because I'm, I maybe because when I like went backwards to get the factor of two, I think I made a mistake with the factor of two. Hold on, let's go back. Um, this used to be one half, and I just like quickly multiply everything by two, um, which I don't think was correct. So, uh, Let's see if if I keep that one half. I'm not exactly sure what I did, but um, maybe when I rearrange re this, I'll find out. Okay, so I think there's like a one half here and a one half here. So then that and also that two is not there. So then. Um, what happens to the term with the C minus V? Um, so what is, the question is what is, there's a, there's an imaginary one here. It's not so imaginary. Um, what, what is one minus one half? That's one half. So this really, this really is um, one plus C, oh gosh, D, D tau DT, one half plus one half. So we change the sign. 
one of C minus V D tau DT um, D tau DX prime plus one over C minus V D tau DT. Okay, wow. What if is this a, this I think this is actually the correct derivation then? Factoring that one half. Um, we add those two velocities, those two fractions, one half, one over C minus B. Um, yeah, okay, we need to factor out the d tau dt, of course. Um, equals d tau dx prime plus one over c minus b d tau dt. Yeah. Okay. So that's the derivation. Um, as messy as that was towards the end. So sorry. Um. Not sure exactly what I did with that multiplication by two, and then not not working out. Um, probably worth investigating for a second what was going on there. Um, but I think I found the correct pathway to the solution, which is very satisfying. Um, I'm gonna upload this video and then probably redo video with a cleaner interrogation. Um, there you go. That was not easy going from, oh gosh, um, sorry, going from, going from that top equation to that purple equation. Yeah, of course that's the case when X prime becomes infinitesimally small. I feel like Einstein could have maybe given us a little bit more help with that one, but that's, that's how it is. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.